oxygen that your search was over, that struggle transformed into solution, that resistance cleared and allowed for soaring success. This is now possible as what you've been asking for is being shared. Expert entrepreneurs offer their transformation story because of a personal alignment to a product or service that resulted in holistic happiness. Their health, their wealth, their relationships have all improved and they are extending this opportunity to you so that you may find exactly what you've been looking for. Welcome to the Health and Wealth by Word of Mouth series brought to you by Light on Living where we introduce you to what could be the way to your own prosperity and abundance. Hello everyone, welcome to the final week here of Health and Wealth by Word of Mouth. And yes, you are listening to Light on Living. It's a special series, a very special series because I was looking around at all the wonderful people in my life and saying which ones were so like just glowing with joy and fulfillment Film fulfillment, that's not a word, but <laughs> feeling fulfilled and really wanting to to connect with others so that they can do this as well. And I thought, oh my gosh, I super duper want to make sure that I help them do this by word of mouth. And it's not that just that they are glowing because they're feeling better than they were before and that they are that health is coming exuding out of them, but they were also creating wealth wealth in prosperity, wealth financially, wealth in the connections and love around them. So I'm so happy to be bringing on my first guest here, uh, Larissa, and I'm going to go through and share all the beautiful things she does, but Larissa Zombat. Now, we have been friends for just a few little years now, but I feel like I've just known her for lifetimes and lifetimes, mm -hmm. it's like a piece of just yet yeah, peace uh, she's just she exudes peace so let me share a little bit about larissa and then we'll just bring her on here but larissa is a dimartini De method facilitator an nlp coach and founder of om toronto a community center for personal development and wellness larissa inspires she empowers and she supports her clients on their path of healing and self-discovery by teaching real life tools and techniques to create lasting and measurable results. I have to highlight that lasting and measurable results. <laughs> Larissa helps you to clear limiting beliefs, which keep you spinning your wheels and rediscover and refine your intuitive abilities so you can break through the suffering and experience freedom. So whether working one-on-one -on -one or teaching classes or leading entrepreneurs, because she loves that, Larissa teaches you how to dream big, achieve your goals and uncover your innate gifts and values to live an inspired life. And you do all that, Larissa, so well. <laughs> Go. Thank oh, you welcome. For having me on the show. Oh, you're so, so happy to have you here. I just have to say, so I was drawn to you originally because of the name of your center, which is Om Toronto. Uh, we love that word, of course, and you love that word. And then I was just even more surprised when I found this beaming soul of yours just shine out today. Hello, I'm here to help the world. <laughs> right, so if let's just begin by this. Um, let me just share, ask you, you you've gone through a lot of health challenges yourself and was it was it on a soul um, purpose journey of yourself or did you already know you wanted to help people when all of this started um i think i got into the industry because because of my health like i in the beginning well first first it was um i think i consciously moved into the community because i was looking for a community um i was never expecting to make um I didn't expect in the beginning to create a healing center. I was just looking for friends. Um, but certainly, like getting sick I, when I was 19, um, I took the uh, I took pills to go for malaria to go to Egypt, and I actually oh. ended up experiencing one of the side effects, which was losing my vision. And um, oh. it came back. Um, you just lose it like temporarily, and then it comes back. And and so I I experienced that for a little while. And what I found during that experience was um i got to a place where i had to inside of myself like i i was having i had to have lumbar punctures done and i was in and out of the hospital and doctors didn't know what was wrong at the time i didn't realize that it was a side effect of the vaccine until many years later oh and so gosh. during that time i was kind of a little lab rat for them to try different medications and they were they were trying to help me but because nobody knew what was wrong i got to this place in being sick where I experienced like genuine surrender to the process, mm -hmm. genuine surrender to like, 
everything that was happening, everything I was experiencing. And instead of looking for answers in medication, I started looking for answers as to why, like why on a personal spiritual level is this happening? Um, and what are the contributors to it? And, um, it wasn't until years later that I recognized like at the time where I lost my literal vision, I had lost my figurative vision in life. Like Mm -hmm. I started, I went into a program in university that, um, I wasn't inspired by, I wasn't excited about it. And I ended up getting a lot out of going, uh, but it certainly wasn't the vision I had for myself or my inspired vision about what I wanted to create or what I valued. And so, uh, as, as a connection, I started to make the connection between losing literal vision to figurative vision. And so that, that was one of the experiences with health that really inspired my journey to understand more and understand the psychosomatic connections, uh, between mind and body. I think that, oh, that, that I'm so glad that you did. And when you say about the, the psychosomatic um, symptoms, that is so true. And I love that you said the answers are not in, in medication. Do you think there's ever a time, sorry, the side, side question, is there ever a time where medication is helpful? Yeah, as, I think absolutely. I'm not against medication. I'm not against allopathic medicine. I think when alternative medicine and allopathic medicine come together, Uh, I think it's a beautiful marriage. I think there's absolutely a time for allopathic medicine. It gives us um, amazing insight into what's happening into the body, into results uh, that are that are taking place. And alternative medicine also has its place. And I think really the combination is addressing addressing our health and our wellness from all three levels of awareness. So spiritual, mental and physical. So I would say that the alternative medicine tends to, uh, certainly there are body, body works that um, take place with alternative medicine, like acupuncture, Reiki, um, other hands-on techniques, uh, but there's certainly a focus in the spiritual in, in that approach. Um, and then in terms of therapies, limiting belief work, um, the Demartini method, that they each work on all levels, but there's different focuses. And so those tend to work on the mental and then the physical, the allopathic medicine has done an amazing job at looking at the physical body and working to understand it. And I think each one has its limitations and each one has um, a beautiful awareness in it. Hmm. You're you're making me so curious as to finding out, um, talking about limiting beliefs, uh, how far off, I don't want to say how far off the mark, but I kind of do, um, of when you said you chose a course in, in university there in school to go with, how, what, can you share with us what that course was just because to see if it yeah, was that far off? Absolutely. So it's so interesting because, uh, the work that I do, um, with the Demartini method, we look at what people's top values are. And we're living our top values all day long. We tend to subordinate to other people when we're comparing ourselves. So people will think like, oh, what's my, what's my inspiration? What's my purpose in the world? What am I here to do? What's my job? And then we'll go and, and instead of following our own inspiration, the thing that fills us up, we tend to like look at other people on Instagram or look at people on Facebook <laughs> or authors or celebrities and we start to compare ourselves to them instead of honoring our inspiration or our top values because socially we have this image of of the ideal and we it's it's beneficial to recognize that we each have our own ideal there's no social there's no real social ideal um, and so when we start to subordinate to other people's uh, practices, their beliefs, they might be living in their inspiration. And that's why we're so excited to follow them or to learn about them because we see their inspiration, but we think that it's the specific actions that, um, that is fueling it. And really it's that they're standing in their heart. They're standing in their truth. And so for me, uh, my truth at the time was I was totally interested in biology. I wanted to go to Australia and study marine biology. I wanted to swim with the dolphins. Oh, yes. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and so I was interested in, I was interested in biology, not so interested in chemistry. And, um, and at the time my parents said like, well, if you, if you go to, um, you can't go to Australia, but you can go to BC and you can study bio, like marine biology there. And I didn't want to do that. I think part of it was a, like an escape, like wanting to get away and stand on my own two mm. feet and, and just learn life without, um, without like being under, under my parents' umbrella. And, um, 
And so when they said, oh, well, if you go to BC, we'll move with you. I was like, oh, oh well, well, what's the point? <laughs> like, what's the... So, so perhaps it wasn't really my inspiration because we tend to, when we, when we have you stress or stress in our lives and we're standing in our inspiration, we take on the challenge as well. But that challenge turned me off. So perhaps it wasn't really my top value at the time. But um, so I ended up, instead, I looked for a program that I thought would be easy to get into. And, uh, and I was, I was wrong. It was a very challenging <laughs> program and it was a ton of work while I was in the program, but I ended up going into fashion design Ooh. and while I was in fashion, I, uh, I just, I felt like incongruent. It just felt like it wasn't my place. It wasn't where I, where I felt inspired to be. And because of that, I started to become more and more depressed and interesting that like right before my first year was when, um, I, I lost my vision. Like I had planned to go on this trip before starting university, yeah. and um, and that's when I lost my vision, both literally and figuratively. That is so fascinating. I, that is, yeah. like that's a circle. First of all, that is funny when you said about. Well, wait a second. If you're coming with me, wait. Maybe I didn't want to go. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. But, <laughs> but good thing that you acknowledge that. Because how, how many times do we decide to do something? Because for a different reason, but if we don't wreck it, if we don't know our top values, we don't know. This vision is so interesting to me about, you're so right, when you have lost our vision, we can't tap into our top values. Now you have a way of helping people find their, their top values, because we, we got to do that process, and I'm in the middle of it, so I'm kind of learning my way, but we can know ourselves, but we, but there's a deep, like what you said, you can focus on different levels of getting to know yourself with those top values. Yeah, absolutely. And so what happens is people tend to, like I was saying, we tend to subordinate to other people and we think like, oh, I don't know my purpose or I don't know my inspiration. And it's because often we tend to think that it's like the celebrity or the famous person who's like achieving uh, great monetary abundance or who's yes. achieving great social abundance. Um, we tend to think that they're the ones who are the success in the world. And they are successful in in whatever success is for them, right? In if they're uh, if they're standing inspired, and that's the work that fills them up, then they're successful. Yeah. Um, but when we try to put on someone else's like value suit, <laughs> you know, it doesn't work because we're trying to do exactly what I was doing when I was when I decided to go into fashion. I was like, oh, like you know, that'll be an easy easy thing to do and you know whatever I'll just get the degree my parents want me to get and then I'll figure out what I want to do with my life from there um, and so by putting on their value of needing to be in a university program at this time mm -hmm. uh, I started to subordinate to that like as long as I get my degree it'll be okay um, yes. and so when we look at what are the things that we're doing all day long what are the things that inspire us what are the things we give our time our energy our money to um, what are the things we surround ourselves with when we when we look at those questions and this is uh, the values determination uh, that John Demartini created and so when we look at that and we especially when we work with a facilitator to get very clear because we can uh, we can we can ask ourselves questions but it's really about what's the truth right now not what is our fantasy mm. what is what is it that we wish it would be what is the truth for us today, this week, this month, the last two months, um, but not going back years when I used to do this or I wish I did this. Ah. When you start to look at the truth for right now and for today, and while you and I were doing the process, that was something that kept coming up, right? Like, what is yes. it for right now? Um, we, we are all really quite congruent, right? Like, we don't recognize that we're living in our top values and that our values are running the show for us. Like, sometimes... Sometimes there'll be someone who's like, say, say a woman is working in corporate and she loves her job. She's inspired by her work. She has fulfilling experiences around work. And then she decides to start a family and she gets pregnant and she's still really invested in work and, and uh, growing that in her life and exploring herself in that way through work. And then the day comes that she has the baby and then the baby's here and all of a sudden she has a value shift like baby. And this mm -hmm. isn't the truth for everybody, but what I see with a lot of clients is baby comes into the picture and then 
mom judges herself because she's not working the way she used to be. She's working in a whole new way and she thinks that she's lost herself. But really what's happened is she's had a value shift. She hasn't lost anything, just her values changed yes. because now baby's in the picture and she's inspired by baby. Um, now that, that doesn't mean that um, every mother has to be inspired by baby and baby has to be the main focus all the time. Right. Some moms will stay inspired with their work and, you know, a partner will take on uh, take on taking care of the child or another caregiver will take on taking care of the child and mom will go back to work and, and do other things. So it's really about not subordinating to social expectation or social standards or moralities that we take on and we, we take on as our belief systems mm -hmm. because there's no real truth to morality, right? When right. we look at where morality comes from, uh, it's a compilation of beliefs that usually a group of people believe in and, and so practice it as a standard. But if you follow morality up, so there's personal morality, family morality, social morality, uh, religious morality, institutional morality, and then you go all the way up to national morality. Well, what yes. happens when two nations don't agree on that morality? They don't have the same morality. Who's right and who's wrong? And yeah. the, the answer is nobody's right, nobody's wrong. It's that they're practicing their belief system. But actions don't have any, and I love, this is also John Martini's teachings, um, actions don't have any uh, any polarity to them. They're not right or wrong, or experiences are not right or wrong. They have no value until we put our judgment on them. Yes. Oh my gosh, And yes. so when we talk about like living inspired, it's about what is the thing that, where, where is the the action that we do where we lose time and space, where we just feel so congruent, so centered that we forget about everything else. It's just, and we will find time for it when we're totally exhausted and that thing comes up that is really in our top values, we will find time for it. We'll find energy for it. It'll wake us up or we'll jump out of bed ready to go and do it. That's really about living in top values, not doing those things that we have to be externally motivated for and putting pressure on ourselves for needing to be, putting pressure on ourselves for needing to be some way in our mind, because that too is a morality and a judgment. That is so, oh my God, I'm speechless. Oh my goodness. Really? Well, really what it is, is you're allowing, um, you're highlighting the fact that we can actually, what I'm really feeling right now is that is a statement of know thyself and, and, and that's how I would love to sum that up, but I'm going to keep talking, but because I love that you said, how are we practicing our belief systems and, and understand knowing of the self and, and what does inspire us and what makes us jump up? Cause I know that sometimes you're right. If there's an activity that I have to do because of, I'm just expected to do it. I can pick myself up and I can feel drained and I can make me feel even more drained by doing it. Cause I'm got resistance and, or I can in that very same energetic space have something that twinkles at me and I go, boom, I suddenly am so jumping <laughs> up and down and like, yes. And you're like, where did that come from? And that, that is our, our heart's fuel. And I love also too, that you just highlighted this, that we can take on beliefs, um, just from others saying something to us even and, and saying, well, oh, you've lost yourself or you, you're no longer like this now with, with how you operate in your health and wealth space. Now, like you've created such a community, like the Om Toronto is such an incredible um, location, like a physical space. Is that your, I'm putting you on the spot here. <laughs> is, <laughs> is that your, your goal? mission right now is to is to grow own own Toronto's community or in your own world as a personal practitioner uh that's actually that's something that I'm looking at and transitioning in my life right now too because um or or right now so you I think intuitively have picked up some things <laughs> <laughs> so in the beginning like I said I was just I was looking for friends and I the way that I like started was I joined a Chinese medicine clinic and um I started a meditation group there and then as we grew out of the space, like we just had more people coming. So we needed ah. more space. Um, I moved into a, another space and um, actually my parents at the time lived right near where my office was. And so they generously let me renovate their basement oh. and I turned it into like my own little healing center for eight oh. years. Um, wow. And we would just like have meditation groups and psychic development classes and teach Reiki and people would come and I, 
I, I loved it, but at the same time, I also felt lonely in the practice um, because in the oh. beginning, I had started it to look for friends and community. And I had this beautiful invitation to start teaching more than meditation. And, and so I did. Uh, but I felt alone in that. I didn't have other practitioners to talk to. Like the people coming in were beautiful friends and also incredible students. Um, and I would meet people once in a while. And, and, you know, there's just like that spark, like where you just connect yeah. and you can chat for hours. Like when you and I first met. Just, yes, yes. Forever. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so... So I would find that, but I, I would find connections like that, but I was really looking for a community amongst practitioners um, so that I had people to work with, like to bounce ideas off of and to share together so we could grow together in our practices as well. So that's what f moving from private practice and into OM, that's, that was the goal there was to serve our community, but do it as a team. And so, um, so OM is continuing to grow and it's incredible to see as I continue to grow, like new practitioners coming in and, um, and like the belief systems that we share, the belief systems that we don't all share. Cause it's important to me that in the space we are teaching different information because uh. I don't think there's one way to the end of the journey, right? Like we, whatever it is that we're learning has an important message and there's an important part of our learning and development in it. Yes. Um, and so that's certainly part of what I'm working on creating, but I've also found that um, OM is, I think we're going into our fifth year now. And um, and so with that, I've, I'm feeling the call to go back into my work as um, in co like putting more of a focus on coaching and teaching. And yes. um I listen to like students and what they're asking for. And so while I've been coaching and teaching uh, throughout the entire time of building home, my focus was really on building the practice and bringing the right practitioners in for the space and helping them to promote their work. And now I'm feeling a call to get back into what used to fill me up so much and, and I sort of put on the back burner. So, so taking that into the forefront again. And I, I love that. It's beautiful because you are you've built up a team enough that they are able to continue because they've had that guidance and support, and and now they're strong as well. And I do. I'm curious to find it as you are deciding and, and to heed the calling um, yeah. of interesting you back. Is it for you? Is it important that you are learning your? Are you now taking courses to 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 find yourself again so that you can do that solo coaching again? Yeah, so I just want to say um, before before yeah. I answer that question, I think that like the team is incredible, and I can't take credit for where they are. Like they oh. they independently do their work, and they came in with their cups full. And yes. so while I support them in their practice, and while I, um, you know, like as a community, if we have like a challenging session or there's something that we have questions about that we want to work through together, um, mm -hmm. each person brings brings like a light, a beautiful light to the Aww. table. So I can't take credit for the work that they're doing. Like they're Aww. amazing on in their own. <laughs> um, <laughs> so for me, um, actually last year I. Um, I experienced a, a deeply challenging relationship and, um, and so I dove into, I had an amazing assistant at the time and she really like scooped up OM and held, held the space for the practitioners while I just invested myself in really a year previous to that. I was already taking other courses, but really a year of, um, personal healing, wellness, and, and new discovery in the work. And so that's another part of getting um, getting back into personal practices. I've spent about a year and a half, a year and three quarters, like diving into courses and traveling around. And now it's time to share that information as well as I further my understanding of um, like hermetic teaching, of healing, of, of the body, uh, because that inspiration around biology was certainly a top value in understanding understanding how the body works it just wasn't in the science side of everything and so over the last year and a half I've been looking a lot at the science of how things how things work that, I love that you said that personal healing and I love that that came full circle because you're right it, back then when you were to, when you were attracted to the biology course you weren't far off the mark but that's yeah. the that's the the beauty and honoring that we 
we do we do see shiny objects for a reason. Like they do call us. We might not know why or where they'll show up or find their perfect place. But then one day, like now you're like, ooh, because you, Larissa, have actually when you talk about the healings or you're on this course or you're learning that, my my mouth just open drops open because I think, oh my god, that's cool. What is that? You know, and like you just find the most interesting, but really rooted, like a lot of ancient healings. Like you, when I when I think of your energy and your vibration, it really does bring me to an ancient time of very like pure and like root cause. Like yeah, just root and ancient. I get these old words around you. I love that. <laughs> and so yeah, I think, and it, it's. Um, I think it's a teaching that's rooted in all teachings. It's just as we um, teachings sort of become watered down in time, right? Ah, and so yes. if we just go back to universal laws. And when we're talking about metaphysics, well, really about anything, but specifically my interest getting into the work was around metaphysics. And um, and when we go back to the universal laws that um, govern everything in our environment, the more that we can understand about them, um, they can be applied to everything. Yes. Yes. And so especially that with... ancient feeling that you're talking about, like it's certainly an old teaching that is at the root of, of our universities, of our hospital, of medicine, um, of, of all things that we want to learn. That is, that's oh, so beautiful. Now I have to, I hate that this, I hate when the show always has to end, but what I would love for you to do is what is the, I know that right now people are like, I really do need to just know more about Larissa. How do they get a hold of you? And what, what could they take action on right now to get closer to you with, with their sure, personal absolutely. healing? Absolutely. So I teach um, many different courses. I teach Reiki level one, where we bring in the science of healing as well. Uh, so I teach Reiki level one, two, and three. So we do a full certification, which I teach. The, the level three takes place over a full year so that students are really experiencing a breadth and depth of information as well as their own transformation and healing. Oh, uh, because okay. I think it's anytime we want to move into learning healing modalities, the, the first place we need to look is ourselves. So how do we heal ourselves to share with others? Um, oh. I also teach a something called Psychic Development, uh, Psychic Mediumship Boot Camp. And so that's for people and students who are interested in developing their intuition and going deeper. Oh. They know that they have a purpose and something they want to share. And so we dive in deeply. So if they visit Larissa Zamba, L-A-R-I-S-S-A-D-Z-A-M-B-A.com, there's information there as well as on our website, omtoronto.com, O-M-Toronto.com. Perfect. And Larissa, I will be posting all this information so anybody can get a hold of you this way. Thank you so much, Larissa. It's Thank been absolute so pleasure. Free your mind with Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Connect at ohmtimes.com. Ohm Times, creating a more conscious lifestyle. Have you bought into the idea that you have to work hard for your money, that business is hard? I will share some dynamic access consciousness tools to get you out of your own way so you can create a business that actually succeeds. Join me, Simone Millicers, on The Joy of Business at 4 p.m. Mondays Eastern. So I'm a cat, and I just moved in with this new human, and she's got this little toy she's always playing with all day long. Tap, 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 bloop, bloop. She can't put it down. There it is. Oh, and get this. She even talks to it. Last week, she asked it for Chinese, and guess what? Egg rolls showed up like magic. Humans have cool toys. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the ShelterPetProject.org. (laughs) 
Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the second half of Health and Wealth by Word of Mouth, put on here by Light on Living. I'm your host, Lisa Berry. As we continue into this final week of the series, which is always sad, um, but exciting to bring you the wonderful people, we are really, really wrapping this series up with something that I know you've been wanting to learn about because, yes, we've talked about health. Yes, we talked about wealth, but how do we get to that wealth part? So, I have brought on Rosalind Fung, who is an incredible, powerful, bold, sassy woman who helps coaches, healers, and entrepreneurs attract their soulmate clients and monetize with strategy and soul systems. So, oh my gosh, welcome, Roz, to the series. Hi, Lisa. Uh, thank you so much for having me here. <laughs> <laughs> hello, hello. This is absolutely so... Per- you you are one attractive lady. No. <laughs> oh, thank you. Right back at you, love. And I know when you say that, it, it really is about um, my energy yes. and uh, how it, how I show up. So thank you. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. We have had the pleasure of being on air together a year and a half ago talking about self-love. And because this series is really about transformation, like knowing where you are now and going, oh, there's this transformation I want to experience because I have this desire over there. And I love that you help people go through their transformation by growing their business, doing something they love through magnetizing and monetizing. So I just, my first question to kick this off is when we first met a year and a half ago, almost two now, um, what is your transformation that you've been going through, have experienced and are going through? Mm, Well, (laughs) (laughs) I went through this past year. Well, since, yeah, it, it has been a huge transformation from the inside out in terms of, of course, I, I preach about doing your inner work. Uh, and, and I absolutely practice what I preach. And for me, it's always about being more of who I truly am on this planet, being more authentic, being more real, being able to n- not have blind spots. And that's really one of the greatest gifts is when I am being a witness and I'm, I'm being a witness to myself and in a coaching relationship where I can be called on things that I don't know about myself. And it just opens up and expands so much more. I have become even more connected with a higher power. That's God for me. I have, I believe in multiple faiths. I'm, <laughs> I call myself an alien. Uh, because <laughs> and I have um, I have been gifted the language the light language last year oh, and this is the language of love and so I've been bringing my spirituality all that I've been really embodying into my work with my clients who are also very spiritual uh, they're coaches healers therapists naturopathic doctors, psychics, and, and I've been really bringing in this heightened level of spiritual development into my work with my clients, and it's just taking them to another level. So it's been really cool, bringing in the soul with the business marketing strategies yes. <laughs> and the psychology, the neuroscience background, um, all of that into and integrating it has been powerful. Do you know, I love it when you say bringing in. So when I love that you said bringing in, bringing in, because when I think of bringing in, that's what magnetic it feels like to me. Like when you say magnetize, well, you're, you're without effort. You're just bringing in through the power of this. Yes. Yes. We're calling in and we're, we're doing it from a place of standing in our power, mind, body, spirit. And it is really about the energy magnetism or what I'd like to say is you called me a bold, sexy woman and (laughs) my tribe is bold, sexy warriors. So it's men and women leaders. And really the sexy is about how you show up. It's sexy is about not physically. I want to, I'm on a mission redefine sexy. So most of us think 
you know, the narrow definition of sexy is how you look on the outside. And I'm redefining it to be sexy is your magnetism, how you show up in the world, your vibe. And energy doesn't lie. Like we can all tell, you can take a classically attractive, physically attractive person, but if their personality is very, let's say, conceited, egotistical, they're not very kind to other people, that's not sexy. (laughs) So we can take a person who society wouldn't see as as defined as classically attractive on the physical level. But if they're really showing up, they're very giving, they're contributing a lot of value into other people's lives, they're a leader, they're charismatic, that is so sexy. And that's the sexy I am really preaching about. That's that's who I love to work with is to help people really show up as who they are without their mask so that their vibe attracts their tribe. Ooh, I like that. Ooh, their vibe attracts their tribe. That's so cool. The, the yeah. um, I love when you said a contributing value. Okay, that was huge to me because um, you, I was imagining when you're saying, you know, when we look at somebody on the outside, they're physically sexy or attractive, and then we might say, ah, but there's there's nothing to them. They're not deep. They're not this. And that is really because there's um, there's you're looking for somebody who's going to contribute value that can offer help, assistance, or like on on the path of, of transformation. Like so, if somebody's looking to better their lives, they're going to be attracted to somebody who's contributing value that might help them. Yes, yes, absolutely. And I truly believe that when we truly are tapped into who we really are, our God-given talent, the true, deepest soul purpose we are put on this earth for, then we can really show up and be providing the most expansive value we can give. And so for me as a business coach, it really is helping people get out of their own way and like activate themselves into that version of who they really want to, who they really are. I want to say who they are becoming because we're always evolving and sharing their gifts with their clients and, and attracting their prospects, their idea, their, I, I call them soulmate clients, a soulmate client towards them because they are showing up promoting themselves in a way that's giving lots of value in a way that's saying hey I know I'm gifted and in in a humble way of course (laughs) and here's how I'm sharing my gift with you and if you want to dive in deeper awesome here's how you can work with me for example or here's how you can be part of my tribe and that's the monetizing piece so we I think even I'm going to talk about Gary V. I haven't read his book yet, but um, I keep hearing it. So I think that's a confirmation the universe is time to read that. Yes, those signs, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Jab, 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 hook. And it, what the jab means is give lots of value, 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 value. And then the hook is your offer, your invitation to work with you. And that's what I really love teaching my soulmate clients is to authentically show up so that you can magnetize your soulmate clients and then monetize on your calling. You know, you mentioned something so amazing, the word promote, you said promoting, you know, so when you can, you, you need to promote and a lot of people, you know, there's this thing, if you want to monetize, you do have to promote people have to know that you exist and how you exist. So uh, you do a lot of things right now around your promotion is just awesome. It's, it's fun. It's, I'm going to use the word bold again, because it really is. There's a lot of life. There's a lot of life to your promotions. When you started promoting, did you, how did you learn how to promote this way versus let's call it the old paradigm way? And can you help define the old paradigm way versus now? Oh, sure. Yeah. Thank you, Lisa, by the way. (laughs) You're welcome. (laughs) With with your compliments. Thank you. Because that is truly, as you, you know me personally. So I do love, um, having running a business in a fun, bold, sexy way. Yes. Um, and I'm going to show up that way because that's who I am. So it's about finding your own brand tone. So I would say the old paradigm is, you know, I, I do believe there's a time and place for meeting people live and in person. I still do that. I love it. However, in today's time, we are, time is like of the essence. You hear so much 
um, complaints about, I don't have time. I don't have time. I don't have time. Like, where am I going to find clients? I don't have time. And, and you're not having time because you're thinking an old paradigm way where you have to go out and network and go through these events, build the relationship in real life, go for coffee, you know, like the cost of time and energy and money in that is a lot when you could be doing it in a much quicker way. And yes. this is where I love, um, I love helping people leverage social media strategies through content marketing in a way, first of all, it's free. <laughs> Second of all, it takes less time and energy. It takes, it allows you to really show up in front of, of a bigger, larger audience because you're not bound by physical boundaries. Me being a, I used to be a former registered psychologist and my, my work had to be with people locally. Um, whereas now as a coach, the, the reason I'm, one of the biggest reasons I made the huge leap of faith into my coaching business is because impact. You can have a bigger, greater, deeper impact as a coach because you don't have the physical limitations that a licensed practitioner would. Now, I'm not saying the licensed practitioner is not. I still, I work with them as my client. We just have different values, right? So I'm speaking to my values of creating more impact. And those of you who are listening who are like, yeah, I want to create a movement. I want to create um, deep impact. I want to create a legacy where I can leave out the head. Then it's about showing up on social media in ways where you're drawing in your tribe in ways that you are literally making people stop the school and really think and reflect on themselves. That's the value. And take what you're sharing with them and hope that, you know, whatever degree that they work with you or follow you or whatever that looks like on that spectrum, that you're creating impact. And the ripple effect really expands out. So Me too. I, I, I'd love to share that your social media, anybody listening right now, if you were to go to uh, Rosalind with a, with a Y, Rosalind Fung, if you went to her social media page, this is what I love about how you, oh, there we go. Hi, Rosalind. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just dropped off. I think you were just talking about um, how I invite people into my home and I'm seeing you mean my online Facebook group. <laughs> yes. Well, every, well, you know, it's, it's every post that you've ever done. I really feel like you get, you go deep, you go personal and you share your time and your life with us. Like when I say us, everybody joining in because you really say, this is who I am. I'd love to get to know you. Um, and then you give an opportunity for others to do that same. And you really yeah. create a great space for there with your content. Thank you very much. And, and, you know, as real and soulful as it is, there is also a strategy where oh. I teach my clients the strategy so that you convert on these posts. You convert people oh. into clients. Yeah. So there is a whole strategy, big picture strategy, content marketing strategy that I teach my clients so that they can start to call in their, their soulmate clients much quicker. You don't have to waste time meeting people in real life. You don't have to waste time driving there and going to network events. Yes, all those I still do myself, but I do it way less than I did like two years ago. Um, right. I realized that if I want to, again, going back to my aligned with my big vision value of making deeper, bigger impact, I'm going to go global. <laughs> so ah. I'm always focusing on global impact. Okay, so I have a question. Okay, so can you help us right now? And I'm putting you on the spot. Take the sleazy mm -hmm. out of strategy. Because yeah. I know that your your post, you you said yes, they they have a strategy behind them, but you know what? They're still authentic. They're still awesome. They are not sleazy. So how can yeah? Can you help us with that right now? Take the sleazy out of strategy. <laughs> yes. So I'll pull back the curtains, and I'm gonna let you know what I love teaching people is 
the way and how you create and build engagement. And the way that algorithms, I, I focus on platforms of uh, mostly Facebook and Instagram. Those are my two platforms. And um, it's being able to understand how to leverage on the algorithms as well. So what you post is always gonna be you and authentic in your brand tone. When you share it um, is about the algorithm and how you share it. This is what I dive deeper in with my clients is that you need to speak to your ideal client. You need to have them feel like, oh my gosh, it's like he's in my mind or he's in my mind and they're talking to me like they're they're really speaking to me and there's many different types of content marketing po ways um, that I share with my clients to implement so that that client feels like I really get them um, and you really need to I mean like you can't understand and most of our so many clients are former versions of ourselves, right? So we yes. truly actually need to be connected ourselves with our own purpose and who our ideal client is and get really clear on their struggles and really selling yourself by giving lots of value, sharing client testimonials um, of how you help your ideal clients get the transformational results they are desiring. That is something that I know you are totally committed to. And I love the journey that like your transformation has been incredible. And oh, actually this brings me back to the very first thing you made me think of when we were talking about, and I said, oh, I met you, you know, a year and a half ago. And we talked about being more authentic, real and everything, but that's not to say that you weren't then, or I wasn't then. So can you help us? How does the journey of transformation of becoming more not happen? I don't mean that. Can you like, how can we feel really good about ourselves right now going, well, I am authentic and, and full right now, but how do I become more of what I already am? Beautiful. Yeah. Um, so it's appreciating. So, so my foundation in my work is self-love and really knowing you are worthy. And no matter what, we're all souls having human being experience and nobody's perfect. There's no such thing. And fulfillment in life is comes from growth, meaning stretching ourselves outside of our comfort zone mm -hmm. and contribution. So I'm going to go and focus on stretching ourselves outside of our comfort zone. So we, it's really about appreciating where we are right now and looking at how far you've come and then looking at where is it that you want to go to next? What's aligned with your big vision dream? And what's that next level version of you? Because there's always a the next level. And I'll take myself, for example. So right now, I am, I just like really have been reflecting on how is it that I've been making decisions in my business. And of course, how you show up in one part of your life is how you do all parts of your life. <laughs> and how is it that I make a decision of um, who, what masterminds I decide to join as a client, what coaches I decide to hire as a client, and and when is the right timing? And I noticed this pattern about myself, and I'm going to go, um, I'm going to share some something that I think a lot of your listeners could relate with, is I noticed that there's this inner child part of me, little Roz is what I call her. Oh. And little Roz tends to get really impulsive sometimes and really, really freaking excited. <laughs> I'm a very excitable person in general. Those of you who know me, who follow yes. me on social media, you can see I literally live in, I embody excitement. I embody joy. joy. Um, yes. <laughs> and little Roz tends to be uh, impulsive in that excitement and that joy. And sometimes I might um, jump quicker 
then when I really need to adult bras, current powerful bras, need to step back and, and go, hold on, little bras, let's just really look at the big picture and see if this decision is going to best serve you right now or me, right? right? And so sometimes I forget to do that because little bras takes over. <laughs> yes. So that next version of myself and how I decide to walk myself through is, to really give myself permission to not jump at things that I find really super excitable and I know would serve and support me. It's just, is this the right time? Because I have this pattern of over, it's the same with books. It's the same with buying online programs um, and hiring coaches. Like I tend to hire a lot or buy a lot of books at once. And then I've been on it a bit, but then I get over confused. <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah. You don't have time to process everything. That's right. And I don't give myself the space to slow down. And if there's anything I've learned in the last decade, it's about really honoring being in the, the, the integration phase. And so luckily this isn't a super huge, you know, little Roz doesn't take on my life for, or else I wouldn't be functioning probably, <laughs> but I know she does pop up and I notice I need to talk to myself, my little self and, um, and really coach my inner child through this. Um, and if I'm feeling really stuck, then I, I, uh, approach my coaches, my personal development coach and uh, my spiritual coaches to work on this. So that, that's the work I do as well with my clients. The foundation is personal spiritual development with a business focus. So it's always about your being in your business. Mm, oh, I love that. Oh, yeah. And I love that you specifically teach about business because you certainly have all the other areas that you've just you've strengthened upon so well. I mean, like you've got the joy down and you've got the authenticity and you have, you know, the psychology behind it, too. And, and you're all your struggles and challenges that you've already been through. And I'm sure there's and hopefully there's many more to come because that's a way to grow. <laughs> but but just a bit. <laughs> yes, exactly. Well, I first of all, love, love, love that definition that you just shared with us about um, what fulfillment is, growth and contribution. That is super yeah. powerful right now. So I would love to invite everyone right now who's who's is feeling that magnetic pull towards Roslyn um, about finding the next level version of you. So it's you, but it's the next level version. You're still you. You're still authentic. You're still awesome. Because I know that Roslyn, you are just incredible at connecting with people and hearing them and hearing their inner child. It sounds like you are that coach that can just talk to the inner child of a person right there and say, okay, now let's, what, what is it that you'd like to do? And what does the adult version like to do? And let's have a strategy to pull this together yes. for a successful business. Yes. <laughs> Even business. It's like, what's your seven figure CEO warrior? Yes. Think, think like, feel like, act like versus how it's happening now. It's not a shaming process at all. It's it, again, it's, looking at, I do that for myself. It's like, what does that, that version of Rosalind look like? Not compared, but like, um, and how is she different? How is she thinking differently? How is she showing up differently? How is she acting differently than the current version? And again, it's not bad. We don't ever, I never shame. It's not looking at things or people as good or bad, but just noticing what, what do I need to let go of in terms of thinking patterns or behavioral patterns that are actually holding me back? Mm -hmm. And we all need to do that. So, so it's really visualizing and then taking aligned action towards that seven-figure CEO. And when I say seven-figure, it doesn't have to be necessarily that physically, but um, it may be more, maybe less, whatever it is. But it is thinking about how is it that you really you really want to show up in that next level version of you? Yes. Oh my gosh, I love that. And how can people at least get a taste of you, whether they join a group or they reach right out to you directly and say, oh my gosh, I want to learn more about this. Where can they find you? Yeah, thank you. So you can find me on Facebook. Uh, my professional page is Rosalind Fung Coaching, uh, some colon, Bold Sexy Warrior. And um, you can join from there. You can also join my, my free Facebook group for coaches, lightworkers, healers, 
service-based entrepreneurs, practitioners. Uh, it's called Magnetize and Monetize for coaches, healers, and entrepreneurs with Rosalind Song. And Instagram, you can find me at Bold Sexy Warrior. I love oh, that. I just, oh, I gave, uh, sorry. And yes. <laughs> this is very exciting. I have a free five-day self-promotion challenge. Yes. And it, it, the signups are happening right now. It runs February 3rd to the 7th. And I'm going to really show you exactly what Lisa and I have been conversing on on this call is how to leverage. First of all, how to take the shame out of self-promotion if you're struggling with that and how to really move into that authentic. Oh, did, oh.